just another day in the Bell lab, frantically waving to try to dry, dry some samples. That's normal, right? Shh, should I tell them that they don't actually need to do that? Just kidding, we actually do. <laughs> what you doing? We're manually drying our samples for the IR. <laughs> they need to be a solid. <laughs> and what is this for? What are we doing? We are measuring the functional groups in our samples. What are our samples? We are measuring SAF2 with and without chromium, in the presence of chromium, as well as SAF7. So what are these? What do you mean by SAF? The bacillus offensive strains that we have been working with, and we are measuring the functional groups in them to see if when they're in the presence of chromium, if it changes, if it interacts with the different functional groups, and if we can figure out how those are different with and without chromium. Awesome, yeah. So basically we'll be hopefully be able to analyze the kind of overall, uh, what do you call it, the cellular biomass, and figure out whether there's more or less carboxylic acids, proteins, nucleic acids, all these various things, as well as whether those functional groups are interacting with chromium because then that can actually influence the spectra that they have. And so this is our first time trying this and we found a bunch of protocols and it's like, oh, it looks really easy except that we don't have the, basically the plates, there's special like plates or slides or something that you're supposed to put your samples on and make like a film, but we don't have those. All that we have are the, the like salt plates, which our samples are aqueous and then it was dissolved that. And so basically what we did was we took the samples and we re we washed the pellets and we resuspended them and then we trying to just like put a little bit on it and then air dry it with a little manual help and then record it. So we got one and now we're trying to do the rest. Hopefully this is actually capturing on some camera because I have absolutely no idea. And now the, of course, the nitrogen stopped making an annoying noise. <laughs> but there we go. So Haley, Nicholas, Bree, Booyah. Okay, now for the fun part. So it looks, or I guess the waving is pretty fun, yeah. but it looks like a nano drop, except uh -huh. it's cooler. And so there's the little like crystally thing there with our sample on it that's hopefully dry now. And Haley is going to demonstrate how she is going to move the top over, clamp it down, and then yes. So this is um, FDR IR. So we have this little like adapter we put on it and that is then going to make it easier to test our samples, but it also smushes the spectra a little so we don't get as good of resolution and stuff. But we can't use the other one because we don't have the right plates. And you know, there's some sort of plates that we could use, but we don't have them. And so, yeah, make and do. And now we go and we collect. Now we wait for the fun part, get some results. And dun 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 dun. Hopefully these ones are better than the last ones. Well, actually the first set looked okay, but the second set, not so great. Third set, hey, we're seeing stuff. And yeah. so we have um, it set to absorbance. So if you normally like a chemist would look at transmission, but then when we're looking at all these papers, they have it flipped to be absorbance. And so we're doing absorbance. And so we've got the wave numbers. And so the bigger wave number, higher energy, shorter wavelength, and then those and so different functional groups are going to basically absorb in different regions and we can then compare the different conditions to see whether the functional group composition is changing and whether things are like shifting if they're binding to chromium and stuff so it's the first time trying again so we're going for it looking optimistic Woo! so with with ir we're not getting nearly as granular data as we would with something like gcms or lcms we're not able to figure out like what metabolites there are we're not able to determine like what's that protein um instead it's kind of like the broad collection of all of it so just kind of like the overall content and whether it's shifting in various ways yeah, so our initial idea was that we we're gonna like dry them under vacuum and to make little biofilms that then we would transfer over and it worked for some of them not so much for the second for others but we were just not patient enough to so the first ones we did, we like transferred liquid over, which was easier, but now we had a little biofilm with this one, but it seemed to work okay. And it looks like it's working okay. So we'll have to compare them and figure out how to export this data. Of course, we found papers where they're looking at things in the other direction, but thankfully we can switch absorption and transmittance. And now we would be looking at a version that would make a chemist a little more familiar. So this looks more like IR spectra that I'm used to seeing, except a little messier. Success. 
Well, at least we got all our samples, we got all our data, and now we just need to figure out what exactly it means. We think that we're on to something cool, so we're seeing consistent changes with our Cephensis strains in the presence of chromium that we don't see with our Subtilis, which could help explain why Cephensis is so super and why it could potentially be used for metal bioremediation. And so now we just get to follow up and analyze the data a little bit more. I was able to figure out how to get CSV and TIFF files. And so now I just need to figure out if I can regraph the CSV to make them like annotatable and stuff. And I don't know. New software, new tools, new all this stuff, but we're learning and we're excited. Thankfully for me, my students are really easily excited too. And so they're excited by all of this as well, along with me. And so that's great. And it bodes well for me too, that they don't mind that I'm just, we're all just trying to learn this together. And we're like cl clicking around with things in the software, trying to explore things in different formats, all that good stuff. It's really fun to be able to learn new techniques or reuse old te techniques that you've only used for very, very different things like or in organic chemistry when you're trying to measure your your synthesis products totally different here but you can still basic same basic principles of ir apply where different types of like rotation and vibration and all that polling and all that good stuff that bonds do they have different absorption and then they basically by they absorb different wavelengths and so then if you use these different wavelengths you can see where you're absorbing and then because they're different from different functional groups then you get different results and all that good stuff so yeah ir cool cool